Hi there, my name is Salome Falyun, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, a paper I co-authored called Algorithmic Realism. Well, I'm already there. There we go. Just did it backwards. <laughs> So much of the work on algorithmic intervention is motivated by a desire to do good, and indeed does do incredible amounts of positive work. However, algorithmic interventions, particularly ones that are engaged in social welfare distribution, often end up creating or exacerbating unintended harmful social effects. While many of these effects reflect the uses and organizational goals or constraints that um, sort of under which these interventions are deployed, our paper really focuses on how the methods of practical reasoning with which these interventions are designed may also play a role. Specifically, how designing an algorithmic intervention involves a particular way of seeing the world, understanding problems, and going about solving those problems. So before I proceed, I want to just explicitly say that the goal of our paper is not just to critique computer scientists or even the dominant computer scientific methods that we um, sort of explore. Uh, these critiques um, definitely do not characterize every computer scientist or even every aspect of the methods, and there are individuals and subfields that break from this type in a variety of um, important ways. So our paper makes several contributions. Um, first, we diagnose and articulate the current dominant mode of algorithmic realism as algorithmic formalism. Um, this sort of has three key attributes, a commitment to objectivity and a belief in the neutrality of algorithmic tools, an internalist approach that emphasizes intermodal specifications of performance and success, and an orientation of universalism. Second, we explore and critique an approach to addressing these shortcomings that we call formalist incorporation. It, just quickly, namely that failures that arise from formalism's inability to represent certain facts cannot be addressed by further additions of form. Third, we consider an alternative path by exploring the history of epistemic and methodological evolution in American legal thought, particularly the move away from legal formalism of classical legal thought towards the insights and methods of a school of um, legal thinkers called legal realists. Fourth and finally, we apply these lessons from legal thought to develop an alternative mode of algorithmic re reasoning that we call algorithmic realism. And this has three orientations that depart from formalism, namely a reflexive political consciousness, a porous approach that balances intermodal specifications with real world effects, and an orientation of contextualism. And because I'm the legal scholar, I'm going to be focusing on three and four. So from about 1860 through the beginning of the 20th century, US legal thought was very much characterized by this mode called legal formalism. It's well summarized here in this quote from Christopher Langdell, who was dean of Harvard Law School from 1870 to 1895. And this mode of thought really represented a concerted intellectual project to systematize law around scientific principles and to develop deductive methods of reasoning that could reliably deduce correct decisions in specific cases from general principles. Legal formalism also provided both a descriptive and a normative account of law. So what legal reasoning was and what good legal reasoning ought to look like. So though this, legal, this mode of thought had great appeal, um, its application, however, upheld widely unequal social conditions in the United States. In particular, this mode of thought really coincided with laissez-faire economic policies, and these methods of formal reasoning were applied to defend freedom of contract from a variety of progressive attempts to regulate the workplace in the United States. So this sort of presented a puzzle to various um, legal scholars. How could this sort of supposedly rigorous method of legal analysis fail to account for just obvious conditions of oppressive obvious social realities of work, oppressive working conditions and staggering inequality. And they sort of identified that one of the issues was that these social realities had no place in formal legal analysis. They weren't represented in the method of reasoning at all. So it became clear that enabling various forms of egalitarian reform necessitated, as one part of that broader project, methodological reform of the legal reasoning that was being used to uphold the status quo. This effort to render these social concerns legible led to a methodological evolution from legal formalism towards legal realism. Um, we go into greater depth of this in the paper, but um, these methodological interventions sort of stem from the basic realist commitment to a broader theory of what law is. 
So unlike formalists, it's not that law is the set of abstract principles from which we derive cases, but that law is nothing more or less than the actual decisions of judges and courts. In this sense, law is real. It's those decisions and their effects in the world, and it's therefore the reasoning of courts on the one hand and their impact in the world on the other that must be considered the terrain on which legal reasoning occurs. Again, both a new theory of what law is and a new theory of what law ought to be, specifically that it should be determined instrumentally with an eye to what we wanted to achieve, rather than this idea that there are these fundamental principles that we're just applying in the world. So this lead led to a variety of insights from the legal realists um, that emphasized context and reasoning responsibly in the face of your sort of political role as a judge, um, and sort of bringing in insights um, and methods from a variety of other fields that we analyze further in our paper. But the shift from legal formalism to legal realism for us suggests the potential utility of a parallel shift in computer science from algorithmic formalism to algorithmic realism. Basically posing similar challenges and questions. How is it that various forms of our technical analyses fail to account for social realities? And we believe that the answer in part is that they oftentimes have no place in formal algorithmic reasoning. And it is therefore similarly clear that enabling projects of technical and social reform necessitate, again, as one part of the broader project, methodological reform in our technical reasoning being used to develop various algorithmic interventions. Um, again, in the paper, we sort of develop uh, three attributes of realist thinking that can provide a foundation for this methodological shift in computer science. But writ large, this shift in orientation is, again, this idea that algorithmic interventions um, should be evaluated in this very realist method. Insofar as we're interested in the effect of these interventions in the world, we need to be developing our capacity to reason about them that sort of recognizes that on the one hand, we're fundamentally interested in their impact on the world, and that the other, this sort of must be considered the terrain on which our evaluation occurs as both a descriptive and a normative matter. What an intervention is and what an intervention ought to be should be determined instrumentally based on whether or not it sort of achieved its desired impact in the world. And we think that this allows for a variety of important benefits. Again, I think it leaves us in a better position to question unjust social conditions and sort of interrogate them using technical methods. It uh, allows us to explore an expanded range of possible reforms using technical methods. And it allows us to uphold a variety of different goals and values across different contexts as those make sense. And if you want to learn more, I would recommend you read our paper. Thanks. Thank you.